Beam me up. <laughs> so last night we went to the dyno um, to try our methanol. It went, it went pretty decent. Uh, we made, well, I made like three or four pulls to like baseline in 85. Switch over methanol. It was a little fat the first time, which we anticipated and leaned it out just to fuzz. Picked up a little bit more. Here's results from that. So, with our new 30, 31 wheel horsepower, um, we didn't get a good torque measurement. My car doesn't like the tack pickup on that dyno. Um, they always get in fights and it just doesn't work sometimes, so disregard the torque numbers. But So we got 35 wheel horsepower and presumably some torque. Move the graph up kind of all the way across. So today, I'm gonna deal with another problem I've been having, which is the part where I don't have a shifter in the car. I have a shifter. Oh, it's upside down. We've got an electric shifter now. So the problem is, I know you're thinking, what's wrong with your right hand, John? You make fun of everyone all the time. And I do. I make fun of everyone's electric shifter. The problem is, I don't have a shift light and I don't have a tack. I've got that three and a half that's kind of tough to see. So I've just been kind of winging it and the number's kind of all over the place with me just winging it. So I kind of thought about it. I said, you know, it's probably time that I get an electric shifter like everybody else. Let it do its job, because even when I have the turbo on the car, I'm, I notoriously wait till I see the smoke plume from the soft limiter, and then I shift. So, moving on from that. So right now, we're gonna install that in here. We're gonna load it back in the box. We're gonna take it to the track. We're gonna see what we can do. And I think, since I've been using my radials for the dyno, I'm gonna leave these on for the first hit and see what these do, because A, the radials should be faster. B, there's way too much gear in the car right now. I've got a 456 on a 28 inch tire. These are 315, which is like 30, and they're radial, so I think it's gonna be quicker all the way around. We'll find out. It's like that, got our all installed. Got the shifter, and then we also switched up to a different trans brake button. It's a Terminator button from Biondo, shifters from Biondo too. Um, we're having some trouble with the lights, so that's actually an adjustable throw on that button. So, shifter's in, it's controlled by the Holly. I'll just give you a quick rundown on how that works. So all we do is just add an output. So in this case, it's B3, white and green off the factory harness. Um, right now, so right now I've got it set up on pedal position. So anything above 50, it'll engage. Above 90, it'll release. Um, and what that's doing is releasing power and ground to the shifter. So when it has power, it holds it locked. I'll show you. So right now the ignition's on, the pedal's at zero. I know this is kind of confusing, but it's the only way I can show you this without having the car running and revving the snot out of it. So shifter's on. Right now there's no power to the shifter. So if I pull shifter back, it doesn't hold. I'm gonna put the pedal at 50%. So now that we have a signal to hold it, it holds it there. So I'm gonna mat it and it's gonna release. So that's just for testing purposes right now. So I'll go ahead and switch this back to the way it'll be on the track. So instead of using pedal position, we will use RPM and we'll go above, I mean really anything, above 100. We'll turn it on, so as soon as the car is running, and then above, we're gonna shift this at 77.50, pending yesterday's dyno results. So this is a secondary activation. If, you, if you're not familiar, you can click this and it'll give you a deactivate. So it's basically a window switch at this point. So no other switch inputs, it's just off of RPM. So that will take care of that. And then when I'm feeling really frisky, I vacuum up my car. I wash the windows and I wash the wheels. That's all I can really wash. You can imagine if I tried to wash the whole car, the paint would be on the ground. So I think we're good. We've got we've got the methanol on it. We've got the radial on it. We've got a new shifter, so the shift points are, aren't all over the place. A new trans brake button. I think we are ready to go for tomorrow. So I'm gonna load it up and we're gonna find out what the radial and the methanol will do. So we left off at 1042 at 127 was our best pass last weekend. So hoping the weather's okay tomorrow so we can have kind of an accurate comparison. The NA stuff was pretty pretty picky on the weather. 
So I'll get loaded up and we'll pick up tomorrow. So that's about it. I don't know if it can go much faster than this. 1022, 129, this is with the 315 on it. Um, it did, it went hard right. Um, the track's pretty poor today, which to be expected, it's just kind of a fun day, muscle car day. Um, I don't think it's spun though. So I think, I mean, maybe take one or two numbers out of the 60 and maybe you could maybe get this thing at 10 teen um, if the track was just right, but I think this is about it. So, so I'm gonna put the bias ply tires back on, try that just so we have a comparison side to side of a 315 versus bias ply. And I kinda wanna compare the RPM at the finish line too, going from a 28 to a 30. So this is the pass we just made on the bias ply. It did have a weird, let's see, right here you can see there's a weird dip. I don't know, it felt like it sloshed on fuel, but the fuel pressure is steady, so I'm not sure. But this is the bias ply run in comparison to the radial, the radial's on the right. So it was about a tenth slower all the way around. I suppose if you take the blip out of there, it's probably worth a couple numbers, probably eight numbers slower, but pretty similar, a little bit slower in the 60 and then a little bit slower up top, which I guess you'd expect. So now we didn't change anything and we're just gonna go back up again and make sure that that hiccup is gone around 100 feet. And then here I am thinking I'm having fun with my NA car and Patrick has to remind me why I should put the turbo back on. I've, I've seen this one before, Pat. Diapers hanging off. The bumpers pushed into the fender. Oh my goodness. All the body work. Oh no. The headlights pointed there. Oh my goodness. That one's pointed down. I gotta get out of here before he freaks out. Good job, Patrick. <laughs> This is a pretty common occurrence around here. Uh, golf cart power to get you back. So if you're if you're like an OG follower of the channel, you might remember when we first built the car. Um, we had a fuel pump scenario. Basically, nobody made the gear that we needed. So Brian welded two gears together. Said this is temporary. You have to fix this after LS fest. Well, that was in 2019. So she finally, she finally died. I mean, three years of two pulleys welded together, it's a pretty good run. So now I gotta figure out an actual solution for that, but that about wraps up this weekend. So long story short, the methanol picked up 30 horse the tire. I don't know a torque number. My car does not like the uh, uh, tack pickup on the dyno, so I never get a good torque number. Um, but basically 30 horse and we picked up about a tenth with that 30 horse, we were able to pick up another tenth on on radials. So our previous best was 1042. We are, our new previous, our, yeah, our new best is 1022. So long ways to go to get to that nine, but we'll see what we can come up with. Stand by. So our home, uh, just here, a little side note I want to add in here. If you've been following this NA saga from the get go, um, when we originally took it to the dyno, it made like 400 horse after we tuned it and found the 100 horse, but it would only make like 400 horse. And everybody had kind of a tough time believing that that could be accurate because that 400 horse took the car 1042, which I mean, it's not staggering, but that seems like a little bit better than 400. So we had a lot of discussion about like converters and how they affect a dyno. <clears throat> a lot of people say it's not possible. It doesn't matter. Once it's coupled, it's coupled, blah, blah, blah. Well, I can't tell you right or wrong, but I can tell you in my scenario what happened. So here's the dyno sheets. You can take a look for yourself. The bottom the bottom graph here, that was the final pull we made with the old torque converter. Now the old torque converter, there's nothing wrong with it. It performed fine. It, like I said, went 1042 on 85, but it would not produce numbers on the dyno. So we got the new FTI converter in a couple weeks ago, and then when we took it back to the dyno, um, I wanted to make a base pull, and you can see the base pull was 499. So 
do what you will with that information, but from what I can tell here, the converter did affect the dyno numbers. So just kind of an interesting tidbit because I've always wondered about it and I've had multiple cars on chassis dynos where particular, particularly NA combos where it doesn't quite seem right. So like I said, do with it what you want. Just kind of an interesting piece from this little saga that we learned.